don't start. This is going to be a Did great. Did you ever notice there is absolutely no coloring in our light scheme here? It's all. It's fine. Everything's fine, and we're going to have a special show. Look uh, at it. It's it, this is. We might as well be playing Yankee Stadium. I'm Peter Bales, and this is Jackie the Joke Man Martling, and we have a first on Stand Up Memories podcast, a mother and a daughter who are both stand-up comedians. I want to write the promo for this. You can write the promo for this. This That's week what... on Stand Up Memories, a mother-daughter. <laughs> ah. That is so wrong on so many levels. It is so perfect on so many levels. We have Roseanne Sorrentino right there. Hello. And to her right, we have her lovely daughter, Bridget Cavanaugh, and they are, how long have you been doing it? How long have you been doing stand-up now? Uh, since 2019. 2019. Seems like a long time, I bet, but you are relative newbies. Mm -hmm. Starting at the same time. You start I at the same time? Yeah. All right, I'll ask. <laughs> Where did they start? Where did they start? They actually did not start at Stand Up University, oh. my comedy school at standupuniversity.com. <laughs> Next question, did he they go there? So mad. No, they did not go, no, it's possible. So to now you're trolling for, for work. I am, I'm trolling for business. <laughs> but they're both terrific, I can vouch for them. I've seen them both perform. And they, they look like sisters. They look like sisters. And, and uh, That's a way to insult the daughter and compliment yes. the daughter. <laughs> yes, <exactly. laughs> I'm happy with that, I don't know about her. But I don't want to make this into a therapy session, but there is no way in a million years with my relationship with either my father or my mother, I could be in stand-up comedy and they could be in stand-up comedy too. I don't know how you Lucky do it. Lucky you, they didn't speak to you after you were 14. <laughs> <laughs> so whose idea was it to go into stand-up comedy first? Um, I, it was probably mine because I was always interested and wanted to try it. I just didn't have anybody to do it with. And she, Bridget got involved in improv in college, and I saw her do stand-up. They did it one night, and I thought she was, I always knew she was funny, but uh, I thought she was hilarious. And when she came home from college, I said, do you want to take a class? And she said, sure. How much is it? And I told her, and she says, I don't have that kind of money. I said, I'll pay for it. She says, I'm in. <laughs> they took a So you actually started together? Mm -hmm. I don't know if I've ever heard of even two pals starting together. No, or this is unique. A mother and a daughter starting together, I think inspiring each other in a way. Uh, you must have a great relationship for that to happen. That could never happen with most mother-daughter, father-son relationships. Bridget, I just set you, set the record yes. straight. Yes, no, we do. And it's good because like we have a relationship where if I like make fun of her or, you know, we can take the joke. I think if, if you're too sensitive about it, The elephant it work in the out. room is why isn't your husband allowed to be in the, in the group here? Oh, because I left him. <laughs> and... Yes, that's my father. Can you but, so are you... I mean, that was my guess. I'm I mean, I know. No, you're not an idiot. And uh, Well... <laughs> I don't know what she thought I was looking at, but I was no, looking but this to is, see if this, she had a wedding actually, ring on. No. You know. So wrong on so many levels. <laughs> Now, so your last name is Sorrentino. Yes. And when I was a kid, I used to go to Saratoga Racetrack with uh, my famous friends whose father was a triple crown jockey and everything. One of the people that hung out in the group was Michael Sorrentino, who was a jockey. And you said that you'd been asked about that. But the funny thing about this guy, he's a jockey. So he was like, you know, five feet tall. And I was on a subway plat platform like in seventh grade, I was never on a subway platform for whatever reason, and I turned around and there was an ad for Aqueduct. And th he was a full-size Michael <laughs> Sorrentino. I turned around and said, hey, Mike, boom! And, it, it, and, that, and he was there, and I've never had a chance to tell anybody that, so I'm telling you. Well, thanks for and sharing. And he's not related to you. No. <laughs> so I know him better than you. I you knew do. the guy in the poster. You don't even know. I don't even know. Yeah. So I want to know, most comics would talk about their parents' divorce or their own divorce, do you both do that or not do that? And you obviously have different perspectives on it, my goodness. Well, I definitely talk about it. It, it was probably one of the first things that I ever wrote <laughs> was jokes about that. Were they written out of anger? No, no. 
just kind of funny things that I would say, I guess, over the years, and I just decided to just share them with everybody. <laughs> what in your and how did the, her jokes about him hit you? I'm so used to them now. <laughs> Honestly, like, I talk about it, too, a little bit, like, very, very, uh, like, loosely. But, I mean, I enjoy going up, like, right after her so that I can So uh, that like was the next question. So you work on the same shows. Mm -hmm. Sometimes. Yeah, yeah. Do they Sometimes. introduce you as... Or do you, uh, not always. you spell that later? Not always. Sometimes, like, if I go after her, I'll say it, and then I can kind of do a couple, like, you know, tags off of, like, stuff. The big question said. is, does he come to the shows ever? No. No. Does he live close enough? Uh-huh. You, you sure he had not snuck into the back? He may have. I don't know, but I'd be the last person he'd talk to, so. <laughs> well, it sounds like you've got a lot of material, both of you, on the subject. Uh, that's great. So... Can you both? I hope your father's not here. <laughs> <laughs> Can true. both of you follow each other? How do you like that? Do you like going first or second when your mom's on the show? I like to go second. You like to go second? Yeah, because yeah. she talks about me, makes fun of me, so I like to go after to kind of like get, get back at her. Sweep up get the even. pieces. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. I always like to we got to go to this show. We do. You should. I've Have seen them both. They're the both terrific. They wow. really, the future is wide open for these two. Oh, wow. I, I, I predict. Well, it, it's, it's great to, like she said, I love being able to make fun of her. I do it anyway, so I might as well do it in front of an audience and get some laughs for it because. There you go. My, oh, yeah, I have, I could not guess in a million years how old you are. Is that rude? No, I get that a lot. How old do you think I am? You know, Just this, this is a no-win situation. I'm going to say I'll, I'll 24. Okay, close. I'm 27. 27. I get that I look a lot younger, though, like teenager. No, no, that we no. <laughs> oh God! Yeah, Don't set luck. yourself up. <laughs> Don't set do yourself do on the back. Math. I subtracted five. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not stupid. So I didn't care about getting in trouble with her. I worried about getting in trouble with you. I these said 34, just to. All right. These two have done something smart in their backgrounds. You, Roseanne, have... Now you didn't talk her into divorcing your father so you guys could have a comedy team here. No, I should have, in okay. hindsight. Yeah, earlier. We could have started sooner. Yes. <laughs> How long <laughs> have you been divorced? 12 years. So you Do you want to ask her out right now yeah. before the podcast <laughs> is even over? I, Can is, we... What is going I, is on? Is this not interesting? I no, just, it's very interesting. These are, personal. these are questions people would want to know. No, of course sure. they do. I mean, I wouldn't think, you know, you leave divorce court and walk to the comedy club. Do you want to take a pill right now, a little blue pill? So I you're did. <laughs> you did. I took gummies. <laughs> he took gummies uh, before the... Uh, Peter's passing out pot gummies to the ladies and to us for the post-show part. <laughs> I can't wait. Now, listen. Do you know that Roseanne has... How would I know? ...nationally toured in the show Annie. True. Tell yes. us about so that. You, so you were an actress before you were a comic? Yes, as a child. I, uh, I toured in the Third National Touring Company as the original Annie. And then I was in the film version, the 1982 version, as Pepper. See? Wow, so that's a whole, big, that's a whole horse of a different color because it wasn't like all of a sudden you said, let me, I want to go on stage and get some of my yacht. You already hooked on the stage. Yes. And yes. then stopped acting to get married and... Yeah, I had a career. Uh, I'm an assistant principal, so I'm coming to the end of my career. I retire in June, and uh, I always wanted to try this. And the very first time I got up on stage, I said, oh, yeah. yeah. Are you ready you remember, for retirement? You remembered all the old? I, I did. I, re I was much more nervous because it was a whole different um, When animal. you have other people on stage, it's a different world. Right. You know, you look this way. And, and you you've get... rehearsed, and it's scripted, and, you, you know, you've worked on the jokes, and... So stand-up comedy <laughs> is, is going to be your retirement. That's what you're going to focus I, on. I certainly hope so. And I would like to I would get back into acting. Good um, for you. you and know. to be fair, she never stopped performing. She was doing, she was in the musicals with the children at the middle school. Oh. Right? The assistant principal in like the musicals. Like directing them or no, in, no, them. I was in them? No, in Lead roles. Lead roles. Lead roles. Um, well, is, is that fair to the children for you well, to take the best roles? It started because of the Annie anniversary. Okay. And they wanted to do Annie, and they said, would you be Miss Hannigan? And I was like, don't twist my arm. Of course, I'd be Miss Hannigan. 
And then it sort of just became a thing that the next year they wanted me in it again, and then the following year, and so. So that's so fun. It. That's, yeah. that's so fun. And it's fun. fun to connect with the kids on a different level than always being the one who's giving them detention or suspension. Now, the whole time <laughs> you, you were acting that's before correct. you were principal, <laughs> did, did you fool around with comedy at all? Or No. I, I, I always had a comedic, good comedic timing, so I could do, you know, I could pull a joke off in, in you know, a scene, but I, I never did it. And I don't know why. Maybe I was intimidated. Maybe because I thought you're just so bare and open when you're up there, and and if you're not getting the laugh, it's the most torturous. It is time the best thing life. in the world. The worst thing in the world. The, yes. Before you were a principal, were you a teacher? Yes, I taught English. Because I I only uh, what's it monitored a few tests and and monitored uh, the social science. You know, where you turn the TV on and leave this. It's impossible to hold back the horses, right? Oh. Did, did you? Well, I, you know, I. You try I and hold to, it to a bare minimum. Sometimes you just can't help but, you know. I used to just tell them, you know, this is, listen, you're a captive audience. I do five shows a day. You better laugh at my jokes. And but the difference is, in stand up comedy, the audience is grading you. Yes. Look Absolutely. at that profundity from my partner, <laughs> Peter Bale. <laughs> That as sorry deep. as I was, I had to sit with you today. <laughs> I'm a little less sorry. I'm deep sometimes. Very. He's also a professor. I know. I know. I, know. I have History. not seen his now, diploma. I have no proof. <laughs> Bridget. Yes. You have something great in your background that I relate to. I did improv in college, and that inspired me in many ways to do stand-up. Is that true for you? Yeah, I did. I did a lot of improv in college, and I was performing in uh, a theater in Connecticut, actually. Doing this. So like, improv was like my whole thing for like a long time. Very Peter cool. used to do improv, but then he went to stand up because he was thrown out of every improv group <laughs> he was in. So he had, he was, I was thrown out was of every. I was the director of several world famous improv groups. If you can't act, teach. Oh, I hate that. I real. Oh, that. <laughs> yeah. Now, now he's hitting it's me below the belt. Wow. I found, oh, that hurt. I found a button. <laughs> oh, he found a button. Now you're on not that divorced. No, no. I've never been married. Really? At your <laughs> age? 27. <laughs> At your age? This is so inappropriate on so many it levels. Is, you brought a mother and daughter for us to interview. Okay. Interview them. These, the, uh, what do you find funny? <laughs> What's your favorite animal? Come on, let's get a little skip. Blue. Yeah. We, oh, oh, you've had a lot of wonderful times in stand-up, both of you. I know, I've seen you do great. But you must have had times when you wanted to quit. Oh, yeah. Tell me, tell me about it. Does something pop to mind right now? Yeah, there was a show we did. Actually, we did yeah. this show together like a couple weeks ago. And it was, pro it was the worst show I've like, ever done. Isn't like, that crazy? Because <clears throat> it happens to every one of us, where you do it and do it and do it, and then you have a really rotten show and you're like, I got to quit. Which is, when you think about it in perspective, it's absurd. Yeah. Right? I'm never going to take the Long Island Expressway today. I mean, ever again, because it was traffic today. Like, you know. Yeah. It, and you were both on the same show? Yes. Yeah. Was it something you were... It was your fault, or was it like a bad mic, bad audience, bad sound system? It was a combination. Yes, it was all, all of, of the things. And then, but you blame yourself anyway. No, oh no, I blame the situation actually on that one. There have been some shows where I've been like, oh, that was me, but this was just. Well, the sound, the sound system was like suffering from the beginning, so the audience couldn't really hear us. So then they were kind of mad about that. If whole the scenario. audience can't hear you, that doesn't really give you a leg up. Yeah, no, <laughs> definitely not. That's, that's like rule number one. So yeah, then when, when I got up there, uh, they like couldn't hear me, so they're trying to like coach me the whole time on like how to make me more, I don't know, make them hear me? I don't know how it was. So. Um, Louder, stand up to the mic. Yeah, it didn't so help like, that guys were at the bar, like, rah, you know. Yeah, so it was just like one of those things, and then they got mad at me, and a woman after the show, because I actually like, I do a lot of jokes because I worked in um, a nursing home, so I do a lot of jokes about like you know older people and careful. Know. Yeah, exactly. I'm gonna tread lightly because this is what got me in trouble at this show. And so they were t complaining they couldn't hear me, couldn't hear me. And at this point, I can't change it. I was like, guys, I don't know if you just can't hear me or if you're just old. So I was joking around. <laughs> Whoa. They didn't like that. And usually, I can get away with it. You know, I'm never like 
you know, mean or whatever, but this one lady, like, I totally lost her because she was, she was sitting like this the rest of the show, like, oh, staring. Oh, mad at you. I, I didn't get a single laugh from her, her entire table. Like, I lost the whole crowd. <laughs> and then after, I'm sitting there, and she makes eye contact with me. She goes, you, no good. You're mean. It's, it's like, amazing <laughs> when you have a whole crowd, and there's one person yeah. that looks like they ate a lemon before they got there, <laughs> and it yeah. just casts a pall on the entire, in your head, on, yeah. on the entire room. Yeah, so she said wow, I was mean. So, so was... you had a bad show, and then you had a bad show, and in... yeah, yeah. It was the most now, painful not to add insult to injury. Tell me, there wasn't another comic on the show who did really well. Um, everyone kind of struggled except yeah. the headliner. Yeah, good, good, good. Yeah. Okay, but, good, good, good. Yeah, we all were like collectively having a bad night, so it you was know, there's nice nights where like all the comics do so bad, and then Peter goes up <laughs> and blows the room away. I've died. Wait, I haven't seen that yet. Yeah. But <laughs> I was he about, says it's happened. I, I was about to thank you for I, saying you pulled the rug out, man. You said something nice, and then boom, right at the end. Sorry, Charlie Brown. That's it. Yeah, I, gotta, I, find, I can't really be that objective, though, when it comes to her, because I really do think every time she gets on the stage, she's just lights out. And she'll get off, she'll be like, oh, I don't know. Uh. I'm like... It was great. It was great. Well, I feel like you always compare it to the best time or right. the best show you've ever done. It's like, oh, right. but I can do better than that. So it's right. like and every time you do a little better, that becomes your new standard. Right, that's the bar. You know. So anything less than that, it feels, you know. It's feels funny impressive. when you start because you're not making any money and you want to do well. And then as you do a little better, you got to do better because you're getting paid more. And the more you get paid, the more pressure. Wait, they pay. The pressure you for never this? goes away because then all of a sudden you're making a lot of money. Like I can't just go out there and get away with it. I gotta right. give them something to write Tell home. Tell them about. what it's like on the way down. I'm already here. <laughs> what, I'm just, come on. what would I? What, what I? How would I describe it? It was so fast. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't walk down the mountain. I jumped out of a plane. <laughs> Oh and gosh. there you were waiting. <laughs> <laughs> I was. Why don't I, we do a show together? I was waiting in the valley for Jackie. I knew he'd arrive. <laughs> and it's just a matter of time. <laughs> it took a lot longer than you thought, though, didn't it? It did. It yeah. did. I got the money to buy and sell you. I did. So I want. Uh, then you get divorced. This is a little heavy. Now, I never encouraged. I have two sons. Either of my sons to do stand up because it's so difficult when you start, and sometimes the sets can be really difficult, painful, humiliating even. I couldn't imagine them It'd going- It'd probably be the same for them. Go, right. <laughs> anyway, um, but do you know what I mean? I mean, uh, I, I don't know if I could watch my son bomb. Everybody bombs. It's mm -hmm. normal to bomb. You know, Jerry Seinfeld bombs. Uh, Richard Pryor bombed. It's it's absolutely true. It's normal, but I, watching your it, how what is it like to watch your daughter have a tough set? Uh, well, I can I can read her face immediately. I know if if she thinks she's not having a good set, I can tell from her her body language and the way she starts to speak. But I guess coming from my background, um, I'm I'm very I encourage her. I want her to do it. She's good at it, and so I want her to really right give it her all. Because, you know, I have no regrets that I left showbiz when I did because I have the luxury now of retiring and having a pension and I can do yeah, whatever I want. Right. So, but there are times when I said, God, I've, I wonder what would happen if I just would have stuck with it. But, you know, as cliche as it sounds, I do believe everything happens for a reason. And I'm, it's very exciting for me now to be able to experience this with her and watch her and be her cheerleader. It really is. So I, I enjoy that probably most of all. Like I get a little upset when we're not on a show together. And she's like, oh, I have a show. And I'm like, oh, oh. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's the problem. That's <laughs> but oh, no, you're because working. I do, you're I working do, tonight, huh? <laughs> I didn't ever ask me to do that. That's fine. <laughs> I'll be right back. I'm going to go let the air out of your time. <laughs> <laughs> so how do you react when you see your mom having a tough show? You know, it's, it's, I mean, it's hard because obviously, you know, you obviously want us to do well all the time, but it's kind of nice almost in a way, like when we both, generally I feel like if like one of us is going to have like a tougher night, like the other one probably, you know. So it's kind of like the ebb and flow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's kind of nice. Like on the ride home, you'd be like, man, that crowd sucked or whatever. Like, you know, you can like kind of relate in that way. So did you, 
stop acting because you wanted to uh, go back to school or get married or, or did, I mean, it was a choice to stop? Well, I stopped because at the time, um, around 14, 15, I was too old to play really young, but I still looked too young to play You older. were right in that no man's land. I was, and I kept going on auditions and going on auditions. And at one point I said, you know, I was going to high school and I said, I just, I just got yeah. to high school. When and as school, a kid torn around, that, that is a tough, Oh, it was great. I mean, that's tough for anybody. It wasn't tough for me or my mother. She had the time of her life. <laughs> was she a stage mom? <laughs> no, no, not at all. Half the time she, you know, I was on the stage and she was out with, with the other moms or with the tutor so or whatever. So she didn't push you into it. You'd... Oh, I pushed her into it. I pushed her. So, so funny. can the two of you write together? Can you say to your mother, that joke's never going to work? Yeah, there are times like... <laughs> and she, vice versa. There have been times where, like, I think it just happened the other week. Like, she got off stage and I was like, oh, you changed this. And, like, I like it better the other way. Or, like, I, I kind of be like, oh, what if you said this here? So we kind of will, like... And your mother said, you're grounded. <laughs> 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 I always take her advice because... Every time I've taken her advice, it's improved the joke. Oh. She just has her real quick wit. And now, do you she's charge very, her? Yes. 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 <laughs> it's, it's, I, I'm hemorrhaging money all the time. Hemorrhaging money. Well, let me just uh, recommend to our audience, the time went so fast, a mother and a daughter, both really funny stand-ups, Roseanne Sorrentino, Bridget Kavanaugh. You never... Uh, I have never heard your names. Are you from Long Island? Are you from Connecticut? Long Island. Or? Long Island. Long Island, yeah. So when you reference Connecticut, you went to school. There. I went to college there, yeah. Which college? Uh, Quinnipiac. Quinnipiac. Yes. Quinnipiac. That's an Indian name. It is, yeah. Meaning? A lot I'm of money. I'm not going to finish yeah. your jokes. <laughs> Meaning I'm in I'm not forever. your mother yes. and I'm not your daughter. <laughs> Uh, Quinnipiac anyway. is an old Indian term that means avoid Peter Bales' comedy college. Right. <laughs> take what you want take the competition. That's what I was trying to say. Yeah. But um, listen, you guys are terrific. And you came on Stand Up Memories, and we really appreciate and it. And we will have you back. If oh, you we really want you back. We'd like to come back. Oh, oh I'd love to come we'd back. We'd love to have you back. So yeah, honored absolutely. to be asked. All right. Well, this has been Jackie the Joke Man Martling, or as I always say, Inappropriate on so many levels. <laughs> and I'm Peter Bales. Paybacks and are a bitch and they come in bunches. They so do watch indeed. your white hair. <laughs> <laughs> See you next time on Stand Up Memory. Thank you, ladies. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, ladies. That was a pretty good episode. A new episode every Wednesday with me, Peter Bales, Jackie the Joke Man Martling, comedians, interesting people. Leave a comment. We'll, we're gonna we'll get, we'll get uh, what am I saying? I don't know. We're gonna get back to you. We will respond to your comment. StandUpMemories.com, if you go there, it shows all the different all platforms. Oh, Spotify, we're on everything. Every Wednesday. Stand Up Memories. Every Wednesday. A new episode.